In the Zone, presented by TD. It's In the Zone, presented by TD. Ben Ennis and Mike Wilner in our super secret, awesome, futuristic studio. Yeah, we can't tell anyone where it is. Where it it's is. secret. The uh, cameraman and our producer will be killed after the broadcast. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's a secret. But it's great. Love it in here. Get to do our own thing. Uh, we're not reliant on uh, any big crew or anything, which is good. And we don't have a Danny Echeverria throwing baseballs <laughs> no. that potentially could kill well, him. That, yeah, that's kind of fun. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, yeah, actually, it was our producer, Eric Evans, I think, saved us from a, an errant throw last time. I think he thinks he saved us from an errant throw. I don't think it was getting anywhere <laughs> near us. I, Maybe not. Uh, hopefully, but I don't have to do the whole show looking over here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You don't have to worry about that, uh, unless Eric throws a shoe at you or whatever. It's possible. But, um, all right, let's talk about the Blue Jays. Obviously, Who throws a shoe. I, I don't know. Seriously, random task. Yeah, apparently, um, obviously, there's not a lot of positives to talk about this Blue Jays team eh, right now. Meh. Meh. What? J Hab. Yeah, certainly a positive. Very positive. Moises Sierra is hitting How? all of a sudden. Yes, that's uh, positive. Out of nowhere. Okay. Um, oh, so you're gonna dig up the positives? Give me a second. <laughs> How about uh, Danny Echeverria and Anthony Ghost, both on defense, and, and Ghost on the bases is ridiculous. Yeah. The Steve Delabar thing seems to be working out rather well. Jose Bautista, Back. returning. Yeah, look out. As uh, we record this before uh, game one of the three game set in Baltimore mm -hmm. against the Orioles, and Bautista in the lineup, yep. Bad playing third. right field, and Not I've talked about it on this video podcast before that I was a little concerned with a wrist injury. A guy who hits for power. Sure. It's, I mean, how can you not be a little oh, you have concerned? To be. Even with the two home runs that he hit in, in the uh, double A game. That helped that me so. a little bit. It, yeah, but you know what? We've seen the kind of fluctuate and guys come back and get hits and then the power dries up. And I don't think that, you know, we're going to see Jose Bautista hit two home runs the rest of the year and that's it. But I would like to see him, I'd like to see the way the ball comes off the bat. I want to see him hit some deep fly balls. I want to see him hit the ball hard. And, you know, we've seen right in Blue Jay land, right? Edwin Encarnacion, Lyle Overbay had years lost because of wrist injuries. Go back far enough, Derek Bell broke his handmate bone. I think it was opening day, 91 or 92. He was going to be the starting left fielder. Breaks a handmate bo bone. It's a bone. Mm. And he has a surgery, and he was never the same yeah. until like two years later when he went to Houston. It takes a long time. Yeah. Lyle Overbay, like you said, I mean... Never Maybe, came back. Yeah, never came back to, to his, his full self in the 20 power. that was power. a broken hand, yeah. right? Little Edwin different. was a and broken wrist. This, we're not even talking about a torn no. ligament. No. A, a strain, yeah. Yeah. which, depending on who you ask, is partial tear. Yeah, everything's a partial tear. I guess. Everyone's walking around with torn little pieces of everything torn. But it, <laughs> is it, that it, true? It's, for sure. <laughs> well, Wait, I mean, maybe in, on. infants that, haven't torn I, anything I have, yet. I apologize. If you're a doctor out there, don't... This doesn't sound right. Let's have a dog. I, I, I can say with complete confidence that, okay. oh, for sure, that everyone's got minor tears. And so that's just part of aging. Yes. And, you know, that's why they call it wear and tear, right? Because there are a little I'm in tears. perfect health. Yeah. All of my ligaments right. are fully intact. You, uh, on the other hand, you're a single I ligament that's fully I can't intact. believe you can walk. Not one. I'm surprised sometimes. How many concussions too. have you had? Not to, to, to go mm. off on a tangent. Nine, I think. Oh, my God. Eight, nine. That eight, eight, helps explain I've forgotten a couple a few of the of theories them. he's come up with on this video <laughs> podcast. Fair enough. Um, so that's good. Yeah. We, we talked, those are the positives. That's good. There we go. We Positive. managed to find them. Also, the bullpen. Yeah. You talk about the bullpen. It's been pretty good. It was pretty rough in the last game in Detroit. I mean, you hate to see a game. Darren like Oliver. That. And, well, so and reliable. Jeff Mathis is supposed to be a great defender. Well, my but, hand's uh, not in the I shot anymore, but you got to catch that ball. I, yeah, I, I, it was, I'm yeah. a little surprised that they called it a wild pitch and, uh, and not a pass ball. Lazy score. But Whatever. What are you going to do? Um, Ricky Romero. Not a positive. Getting away from the positives yeah, a positive. for a second. Uh, eight walks is a fair amount. <laughs> it's probably too many. Do you know that he was the ninth pitcher since the divisional era began in 1969 to have eight or more walks and no strikeouts in a game? That's crazy. See, the thing is, you can walk eight or nine, and A.J. Burnett's uh, no-hitter. Joe Cowley is, did it in his no-hitter, too. Yeah. Uh, huh. It's... It, it, A.J. Burnett, well, I think it was nine walks, was and, nine he hit, walks. and he hit a batter, yeah. too. And Edwin Jackson had, like, seven yes, or eight walks. and he walks threw, like, 160 his. pitches. Yeah, yeah. So you can get by, as, and you tend to see that with power pitchers. I mean, Brandon Morrow, that was his deal, right? Mm -hmm. Walk the house, but also strike out sure. 17. Randy Johnson for the first sure. six years was Sure, career. sure, sure. But, oh. yeah, when you look at that strikeout total, you see a big goose egg along with the eight walks. It's not good. Obviously, 
well, it's obvious to me, it's in his head. Because you still see the life on the fastball, it's still like mid 90s. And the breaking ball is good. Yeah, and it, but you can't. Like, the changeup is his out pitch, right? Because he's got this devastating changeup that you can't lay off when you have two strikes on you. <laughs> but if you never have two strikes on you, <laughs> it's not so hard to take. And and that's the that's problem. The it's the fastball he's not throwing strikes with, and 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 he's not establishing it, and he's not getting people to go fishing, and. I, you know, it's got to be in his head. There doesn't seem to be anything physically wrong with him. And it's just, I think, a part of piling on. And it just keeps getting worse. And he can't dig himself out of it. And, and this is what, what the results are. All season long, he hasn't been great. But I think the numbers take a significant dive when everybody got injured. When the three of the four starters went down in four days. It's his last 11 starts. He was 8-1 and one at one point. Mm -hmm. And even but when even he was 8-1, he, he had an ERA right. that was going to be a yeah. career uh, worst for him. Yeah, it's and like four and a half, over yeah, four and a half. Yeah, it was over four and a half. But then in the last 11 starts where he's been 0-10, the ERA is 770. Yeah. The whip is like 1961 or something. <laughs> great he's, year. Yeah, great year. But he's been terrible. And he has had a few good starts in there, which makes it even worse that the numbers yeah. are so bad. But the Blue Jays were hitting for him early. They stopped hitting for him now. He had a run of five straight starts where they scored one run. Yeah. Total. Mm -hmm. Not in every game. <laughs> one run. They were shut out four times in a row when he was pitching. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And, I mean, not to go all completely negative, but there are guys that just lose it, right? Yeah, but there are a lot of guys, too, who have bad years and then yeah. bounce right back like it never happened. Well, one of those guys is Pat Hankins. Segway. That's, I was, well, I That's good kind of know what I'm doing here. Uh, former guys, Cy Young Award winner with the Blue Jays, and he talked about Ricky Romero. In 93-94, I make the All-Star team, and I come back in 95, and I thought that I'd just put my hat and glove on and run out there and win 15 games again, and it just didn't work out that way. You know, I, I struggled, and I grinded, and I battled, and, and uh, you know, Ricky's going through a tough time right now, but I saw Ricky earlier in Toronto, and I told him, I said, listen, I walked nine guys in Seattle uh, one year, and I said, you're going to look back on your bubblegum card, and you're going to laugh about this stretch you're in, so let's just regroup and get back to the basics. It's like a here-we-go-again syndrome. You know, you get out there, and you just feel like, oh, gosh, here we go again. You know, I don't get a call. Guy makes an error the next guy bloops a ball and and it's just frustrating right now because a we've lost three starting pitchers i think he's probably putting a little more pressure on himself and b you know he's making good quality pitches it's just not quite getting the call and i don't know if he's being a little too fine or what but um you know hey let's just get back to the basics that's the best advice i think i'd give a guy there you go pat hankin i think he knows what he's talking about hope it, so it, it you see it happen he and, went through it twice yeah twice and, Twice. And twice he went through it. Okay, twice. I get it. John Lester. He went through it twice. How many times did he go through twice. it? Twice. Okay. John Lester is kind of going through the same thing yep. as well. I expect him to bounce back. Why wouldn't you? Tim Lincecum, the same thing. See, and I know, man, see, we, you made that we... face. But he's. He, this is a guy who has done it, who's been a premier pitcher in the major leagues for the hey, last three years. You know who else? Just like Ringo Barry Romero. Zito was a premier pitcher. Cy Young Award winner. What happened there, Mike? He changed everything. The curveball was different. And that's a, the repertoire has changed for Tim changed, Lincecum as but, well, but, the slider. And maybe, you know what, and maybe Lincecum changed who he was because of the money, because he felt like he had to prove it. Zito, I firmly believe, changed what he was because he signed a seven-year, $126 million contract and felt like he had to live up to it. Hopefully that's not the case with Lincecum. We know that's not the case with Romero because he had his he got his contract two years ago. Justin Verlander had a year like this. Yeah. Cliff Lee had a year like this. It got him sent down to the minors yeah, in his fourth year in the oh, big leagues. Yeah. Came back and won the Cy Young, what, a year or two later? Mm -hmm. Dave next Steve. Year, wasn't it? Might have been that the next yeah. year. Dave Steve had a year like this. 1986, he he wins the ERA title in 85. 86, he's horrible. And 87, he started to come back. 88 to 90, one of the best pitchers in the game. A lot of guys have this one-year little blip and come back completely unharmed. Now, Zito didn't. Steve Blast didn't. But Zito's a, like a serviceable fifth starter now in the National League. Now. But it's <laughs> the in a sixth giant year ballpark. after his meltdown, right? Yeah. Josh Towers would be a serviceable oh, fifth boy. starter with the Giants. Yeah. But, you know, it, get it's, I think it's rarer that they don't come back when it happens at Ricky's age with his track record of success mm -hmm. than that they do. Yeah, so some of the healthy guys are coming back. Brandon Morrow's 
uh, going to get the start on Saturday, which yeah. you're probably watching this video podcast either on Friday or Saturday or Sunday. What, yeah, at your leisure. That's Saturday. why we do these podcasts. They're on the internet. They live there for their entirety. So you can, you, whenever you want. Uh, just not when you're driving, Maybe because that doesn't make any sense. Maybe we late 23rd century for all of <laughs> I mean, yeah. How cool would that maybe be? Maybe we're sending, it's, maybe it's like contact, where we're sending <laughs> the, 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 the signals out to aliens, and one day they'll send them back to us, like 100 years later, after they get them. Yeah. Whatever, you never saw that. Maybe they'll Joey send Foss us a baseball a podcast from, from there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That'd yeah, alien ball. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, but they, they, don't, they reason, consider us aliens. The, the they podcast, probably call when we're baseball. in here, they have a different feel to them. I like them, though. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, some of the healthy guys are coming back. Yep. Or some of the hurt guys right. are now healthy. Adam Lynn might be coming back even faster because David Cooper's hurt. <laughs> yes, right? because the backup guy yeah. who took over for one of the hurt guys is now hurt. Is hurt. So Adam Lind may be forced back into early service when yep. maybe he's not ready. What is it about first base with this team that if you play it, your back explodes? Edwin's been fine. That was probably his playing, foot. Yeah, his foot exploded his shoulder, <laughs> but that was playing left field. But he's probably played fine. more games at first than anybody else this season. Uh, Adam Lind has a bad back, and now it seems as though David Cooper does too, which is wonderful for a 25-year-old try, trying to make a name for himself in the big leagues. I don't know what it is, but it, what it does mean is that you can't rely on either one of them because you never know when this is going to crop up. You never know how long it's going to knock them out back, for. Right? I have a bad back, and, and I was a kid. When I, well, I was 23 years old the first time it acted up on me, and back then I was actually in good shape. And, Hard to and you never know when it's going to happen, you never know what brings it. Sammy Sosa went on the DL because he sneezed and he hurt his back. Who was it that ironed their shirt while they were still wearing it? Was that uh, John Smoltz? I think it was John Smoltz. I was going to say yeah. John Smoltz. Wade Boggs went on the DL pulling on cowboy boots. But these <laughs> things happen. But Clint Barmas was carrying meat yeah. upstairs. Deer meat. Yeah. Deer meat, that's right. Provided yeah. to him, I think, by Todd Helton. Yes. But anyway, the, the, with the back, I mean, it could be just as much as doing that. And you're gone for a month. So Are you okay? Now, thank you. But... So th this means you can't rely on Adam Lind as much as you'd love to. You can't rely on David Cooper. And so you bring Lind back if you have to. You put him back in the lineup. But this winter, you got to go shopping, and you have to find someone to, who you can rely on to be a first baseman or a DH, whatever Edwin doesn't do. Adrian Gonzalez would be a nice fit. Looks like uh, he's going to be wearing Dodger blue. Yes. Uh, I can vouch for Mike. He has a bad back. I've seen him do the Blue Jays talk post-game show on the floor. At uh, Sportsnet 590 I don't fan. Think, no. Yeah, I've seen that. With the mic was brought down to you. Or maybe it was in between uh, during the break you were on the floor. It, it might have been during the break I was yeah. on. I've done it standing up a few times because I haven't been able to sit <laughs> down. And once uh, yeah, at the ballpark, at that's, that's... this was when Tom Cheek was still alive. I, I remember that I, I had to do it standing up and I had to pile up a bunch of books on top of the desk so that I could have my score sheet up here So I, because oh. I couldn't even do that oh. for a few days. Speaking of Tom Cheek. Yes, Tom Cheek. Here's the deal. Ford C. Frick Award. Voting goes in the first round until September 7th at 5 p.m. Vote once a day, every day. You have to be on Facebook. I know for a lot of people that sucks. I don't care. Create a dummy account, whatever, and forget it after two weeks. But you, once you get to Facebook, go to facebook.com slash baseball hall. You have to like their site, and then you have to go and vote for Tom and do it once a day, do it every day. Like the page, send Tom Cheek to Cooperstown, and then you'll get daily updates. Uh, follow Vote Tom Cheek, at Vote Tom Cheek on Twitter, and you'll get daily reminders and updates. But they're pairing a list of 222, which, incredibly, I'm on, down to what? 40. Do not vote for me, <laughs> please. And I say this with the utmost honesty and Am sincerity. No. <laughs> Don't vote for me. Vote for Tom Cheek. And then after they get it down to 40, and we have Tom on that list, they get that 40 down to 3 between September 10th and I think October 7th. So please, for the next six weeks, make sure you head over to Facebook every day and cast a vote for Tom Cheek. Uh, he's, he's, I mean, there's, we could go for hours describing yes. what he means to the Blue Jays and their fans. And maybe next week on our audio podcast, we will go. Ooh. Yeah, maybe we'll do yeah. some Tom do Cheek a six story. hour never, Tom Cheek audio podcast. I never got to meet the guy, too, which That's kills me. I was just yeah. starting at, the, at Sportsnet 590, the fan. But uh, maybe we'll talk about that on our audio podcast, which you can check out on sportsnet590.ca. You can follow Mike on Twitter at Wilderness590, which he already are. He has like 10,000 Twitter followers. 10,000? What's wrong with you? 10,000, 100,000. What, what do you have? 78,000? No, really? No, not at all. Uh, okay. I think it was 18 the last time. That's pretty good. I've got like 1,000. You can follow me, though. You I'm should. I'm at Bennis Esnet. This has been In the Zone, presented by TD. We'll see you next week. In the Zone, presented by TD.